hello and welcome to my channel um, it has been a while but i'm back with a podcast if you're new here my name is teresa and i started knitting two years ago and um, i've been away for the last i think like six seven months uh, because a lot has happened in my life uh, which uh, I will talk a little bit more about at the end of the video if you're interested but today I have a lot to show you uh, what I've been making in these last six months and uh, I will sharing that with you with the standard format of a knitting podcast where we will start with the finished objects uh, then the works in progress and then we finish with the acquisitions so um, I want to start first with the finished projects. Um, there are some summer projects in there as well because it has been six months. So I did do some summer projects uh, at the beginning of these six months. I will start with my favorite piece. I have been wearing so much uh, since it got a lot colder here. And uh, I'm in love with it every time uh, that I see it. And I feel like uh, this was a work in progress already. So you did see the beginning of it in another podcast. But it is finished. And it is cardigan number 8 from My Favorite Things Knitwear. And it is knitted in um, Isager Aaron Tweed. And also uh, a strand of Isager Alpaca. Uh, and the Aaron Tweed is... Um, in the color confetti and uh, the Isager Alpaca is in the color 4S so this uh, is the effect that it creates as you can see so it's very nice speckled in like a confetti uh, like way uh, which is actually uh, one of my favorite combinations that I saw because uh, I did see someone make it with this exact combination and i just felt like i needed to have it so um i kind of copied it uh, because never change a winning uh, strategy but it is very nice i did pick some buttons uh from a button store here in the netherlands so i went uh to a market and uh, they have like a whole wall of buttons and i picked these ones out so they are clear in, in the middle and um, they have like a silver uh, border and also uh, the middle has silver. And uh, I actually wanted to go for like uh, some other kinds of button. Um, first I was like I maybe want to go for black uh, or brown. Um, but I just took this uh, with me and uh, put the buttons next to it and... This one just stood out and um, I liked it so much that I bought it. Um, still to this day, uh, I have finished it for a while. Uh, I'm very happy with my choice. Uh, I do uh, really like that it's a, a simple cardigan uh, that you can, I feel like, wear with anything. And I do wear this a lot. I also have gotten a lot of compliments, uh, especially when I tell them I have made it myself. And people are always asking, oh, can you make me one as well? And I'm like, no, too much time. And I also feel like maybe it's just me, just a little side note. But when you make something for someone else, they will never appreciate it as much as you would yourself. Because you know how much time, how much sweat and tears went into it. And you just uh, want to care for it uh, every day. And it feels a little bit of your baby because you created it yourself. Um, and I feel like no one else will appreciate it as much as me. Um, Especially because I did gift some stuff uh, before and I always ask them, oh, uh, have you been wearing your socks or have you been wearing whatever I made them? And they're like, oh yeah, not yet, but I will soon. And then it, a year has passed and they still have not worn it. So I'm like, well, lesson learned. I'm just going to make things for myself um, for now anyway. So, end of the little side note, but um, I just wanted to share that. Uh, after this, I actually want to share with you the camisole number 9. Uh, and it was a new camisole uh, from my favorite things, knitwear, the pattern, uh, that came out last summer and everyone was making it, um, including me. 
uh, and I searched for the yarn uh, for a long time because I could not decide which color I wanted to do it uh, but then I ended on a knitting for olive bottle green um, and I bought it and it's the perfect color um, here she is so uh, she is finished a little bit of threads left that I still have to uh, weave in uh, which is not my strongest point I can just never find the motivation for some reason um, but she's very nice uh, she is knitted with the knitting for olive as I uh, told you the merino yarn um, and uh, I knitted her on three millimeter needles um, from the C-knit uh, Koshitsu set which is actually one of my favorite uh, sets of needles that I'm using at this moment um, and she is very nice she's a very simple uh, camisole but um, very very nice and very chic when you wear it one thing though because um, as you can see there's like a double knitted uh, there are like double knitted arms and the thing with that is is that it's actually a little bit uh, too tight under the arms so uh, if you wear it uh, I feel like your underarms won't get a lot of a lot of airflow so you you will sweat a little bit faster which is not nice because I will I want to wear this in summer obviously and when I tried to wear it like just for a little bit at home even I wasn't even outside uh, I was already uh, a little bit sweating so maybe I will remake this at some point I still have some yarn left so I could do it uh, to make them a little bit wider but I was just so happy to be finished with it <laughs> Uh, honestly because the body took me so long it was just stuck in that stitch over and over again every round uh, till the end uh, so I'm very happy that I finished it um, and maybe for next summer I will try to remake the arms so I can actually use it because it's a shame uh, if I won't use it because I really like this yarn and the pattern um, and it would really suit my style uh, in the summer but uh, we'll see I also want to make a lot of other camisoles next year so we'll see if I uh, eventually do it it should not be uh, that much work uh, because it's just the two armholes but um, knowing, just knowing myself I know that it won't be one of my priorities to work on so yeah that's it about camisole number nine my favorite things knitwear pattern it was very lovely to work on, very easy because it's uh, a lot of stockinettes, no difficult pattern or anything. So uh, also for a beginner it would be very nice to make this um, as a camisole. Uh, then another summer project that I did finish. Um, it is the leaf top. And here she is. It is by The Knit Stitch. I think you can just find it on Ravelry um, and stuff. This was such a quick make. I made this in like a week or something. Uh, it is on 5mm needles so that definitely helped. Um, and I wore this a lot last summer because uh, it's just very easy breezy uh, and it also goes with everything. I used Drops Paris in white which is a very cheap yarn so it didn't cost uh, much at all um, and I'm actually uh, thinking of maybe making another one in like red or pink or something or just like other colors because it's first of all very cheap and also uh, it is not that much time to make so yeah I like this one uh, I like this one very much I really do like the lace uh, the lace pattern that it uses I think she has like a lot of patterns with this kind of lace patterns like a leaf of course it's called the leaf top but it's like a leaf pattern and I think she also has like a sweaters and other patterns that have the same leaf pattern on it uh, so if you like uh, the leaf pattern but not necessarily the top you can also choose another garment to make with it uh, then my last finished project which is actually my pride and joy and I feel like one of my most beautiful pieces and intricate pieces that I've worked on in a while um, is the porcelain sweater by Le Knit. and uh, I feel like I've been wanting to make it for a year but um, I never got to it I always chose another a pattern to make first but uh, two months ago I was like this is the moment I'm gonna make the porcelain sweater 
and um, I felt like the blue and beige um, slash white color was so powerful because that's what most porcelain looks like I wanted to make it the exact same so I did choose the exact same uh, colors and the exact same yarn that they uh, used um, for the pattern which is Tin Pear Gint um, and also Tin Silk Mohair uh, from Sandus Garn and uh, I really like that, that yarn, I've used it before for the Agnit cardigan and it was really nice to use so uh, I did not mind using it again um, but here she is the porcelain sweater and as you can see uh, she has like a lot of nice motifs like it's basically a normal type of sweater but um, with a lot of nice color work and um, I really like doing the color work uh, it was a very easy chart so most of the time you could just count and it was like six white two uh, blue and that for the whole row so that was really nice and uh, it is very soft before this I only used uh, drop silk mohair as a mohair so this was the first time using another mohair as well um, I do feel like the mohair from Sennes Garn is uh, a lot softer and like a little bit better of quality than the drops one so it's definitely worth uh, the spend because it is also uh, a bit more expensive than uh, the drops one uh, so I really wanted to know if it was uh, be a better quality uh, or if I could just buy the drop silk mohair again next time but uh, I think I will um, I will use this mohair again I do want to try more kinds of mohair from different kinds of brands um, I also want to try uh, the knitting for olive mohair but that I don't have a project yet for it um, so we'll see about that um, but I'm very happy with the porcelain sweater uh, for now she is finished um, just a little bit of ends to weave in as well with this one but uh, most of them are on the inside so you don't really see them and also I have to block it uh, but I want to uh, block my swatch first because uh, I'm actually a bit afraid that the colors will bleed in, into each other like the blue will bleed into the beige uh, because the blue is actually very bright um, I'll try to show you I feel like it's not as bright on camera uh, as it is in real life but um, I think you can I will put a picture somewhere here with like the brightness because the picture on the a website where I ordered it was actually as bright as it is in real life so you can really see um, so I'm going to try to uh, block the swatch first and then uh, if it doesn't bleed then I will do the I will do this one as well and also another thing that I may want to do is actually to buy um, a steam uh, blocker so I can do it with steam because that's I feel like that would also be very handy to have in the first place but also uh, would not make it bleed at all so we'll see uh, what that will do and after that I will wear this I feel like every day for a week because I love it so much and uh, it is very pretty so uh, if I feel like the garment is pretty it makes me feel nice and sophisticated always uh, as well so um, yeah this one is a very nice addition to the wardrobe uh, that will be it actually for the finished projects um, then now for the works in progress I have a few of them uh, one of them uh, is the zipper sweater from Petit Knit um, and actually the only thing that I need to do is install the zipper uh, so I have it here um, I made this with uh, the sand, Sandness Pear Gint um, Jelly Bean Green uh, color and uh, I did the zipper sweater light by the way and not the zipper sweater because the zipper sweater also has a strand of mohair I did not do that but uh, the only thing left is uh, doing the zipper like I already put in uh, the zipper with with uh, little pins so I only have to use uh, I think I'm gonna use maybe or my sewing machine or do it by hand I actually have to uh, sew it in 
uh, and after that she is finished so uh, she's very green as well i feel like it doesn't really translate on camera again um but uh, i'm very happy with her i will also put i think uh, a photo of the yarn here because i feel like the photo of the yarn translates a little bit more what the actual color is uh, it is really like like an electric green i feel like more and I, f I finished this a long time ago. It is finished, uh, but the only thing left is the zipper. Um, but for some reason I just procrastinated on the zipper and it still is not done. Um, I did buy some uh, thread, especially for this project, um, which, is, which is this thread. Um, it was a bit difficult to find because um, I feel like, uh, I feel like a lot of more sim simpler colors are easier to find and I really wanted one that matched uh, this sweater so I did go to like uh, two or three shops to find this color and uh, finally I found this one um, uh, it is a really strong thread so you can't really break it with your hand so you actually have to cut it so I'm not sure if this is like really meant for a sewing machine or if it's like uh, meant for something else. But I'm going to use it anyway because I bought it already. Um, so that's also one thing that I need to do. I wanted to do it for before the end of the year, but it is the 1st of January already. So I'm a bit late. But um, I feel like uh, I just have to schedule some time where uh, I have to do it. Um, and then uh, it will be done because I feel like this can be done like within 20 minutes or something. Um, so yeah, that's the zipper sweater light uh, by Petite Knit. I really liked uh, this yarn. Uh, it is very sturdy, very nice, uh, not too prickly. I tried it on a few times. Um, also, I have to block it still, this one. So uh, that's also still on the block list. But uh, yeah, very nice. I've never installed a zipper before on a knit project. So maybe that's why I'm procrastinating. Uh, because I'm a little bit afraid. Um, but yeah, uh, that's her. That's the zipper sweater light. Uh, on to the next whip. Which is actually a sock. It's this sock. It is the Kutar socks from uh, Sari Nordland and um, I just knit the first sock uh, of the pair and it was very fun. Uh, I really like lace patterns for socks. Uh, I did buy the 52 weeks of socks book uh, but I didn't really find a pattern that I wanted to make right now and then I saw this one on Instagram and I felt like it was meant to be and I needed to make it um, and also I had some hand dyed yarn that I bought uh, when I went on a trip to uh, Utrecht um, here in the Netherlands and um, I got some handmade sock yarn uh, which I did not really have a project for and I felt like it was the perfect match and uh, I wanted to make these socks with it so uh, it was a really fun process uh, the time went by so fast when knitting on this sock uh, I want to cast on the second sock one of these days as well uh, but I'm not sure if I want to start another project and then after that go for the second sock because I just finished this one also with this sock it was the first time I had to wind up a hank of sock yarn I did wind up hanks before for the cardigan number eight but for some reason the yarn was uh, a lot thicker and also uh, not and not that much yarn in a hank so it went really well because i do have a wool winder but not um, a swift so i had to do it by hand but with the sock yarn for some reason i did not have the swift and i tried to do it by hand and at some point it just got tangled so much and I tracked it and it cost me four hours to actually uh, wind the yarn for this one. So after a lot of um, persistence and a lot of work, I could finally start on this sock. But uh, it is definitely worth it. It has like a lot of little details that you can see uh, when you look closely. Like it is a bit speckled uh, and it has like... Um, a little bit of gradual changes in color 
which I really like. Um, and it's just overall a very nice and classy uh, sock. And uh, also I haven't knitted socks for a long time uh, this year. I think I stopped somewhere when it got a little bit warmer uh, and just switched to summer knitting. But uh, I really wanted to make some new socks because I feel like the older ones are really felting at the bottom where you uh, walk on them. And uh, I feel like a lot of them really look used and abused. So I really wanted, uh, wanted a new pair of nice fresh socks. Uh, and that will be this one. I also have another uh, hank of sock yarn uh, that is hand dyed that I actually bought when I was in Barcelona and uh, I also want to make something with that after I finish this pair uh, and those are going to be the ruffle socks from Petite Knit um, and those are going to be so cute as well. Uh, I do want to purchase a Swift uh, before that because I cannot handle winding sock yarn for four hours that's just too much uh, but i had to do it for this one because i could not give up halfway that would be just silly um so yeah that's actually the story about this sock um i hope i can show you the second sock soon uh hopefully next podcast because i will try to post podcasts again regularly um but yeah very happy about it um can't wait to wear them as well. Uh, then one thing that I also knitted in the summer um, are the orange trousers from Le Poule. And uh, they're almost finished. I just have to decide what length I would like them. Um, but here they are. So it's like a fishnet uh, pants or legging. They are flared. Um, and they're almost done. Like they're like they still... Um, are on the needles at the bottom because I do have to decide if I like them this uh, this long um, but I feel like these would be very nice to wear to like a festival or if you're on vacation uh, to the beach or something um, but unfortunately I did uh, I did start them like at the end of summer so it wasn't that warm anymore anyways um, but uh, they were actually very fast to knit. I used uh, also the recommended yarn for this, which is Fildar Cotton Tree in black. Uh, I thought black would be nice because you can pair it with a lot of things instead of the orange one, which would be only be uh, good to pair with like specific outfits. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna... I feel like I need to block this one as well, then try it on and also see if I want, to, I want to make it longer or leave it like this and then just cast off so this will be done. Also for this one there's like an elastic in the waistband which was really fun to do and it uh, has made it feel like more of a garment um, instead of just like leggings. So yeah, I feel like this could be really cool, not something you would wear any day, but uh, really fun to have and like a statement piece. Um, I do plan on uh, finishing it uh, before next summer, so that will be enough time to actually pick it up and uh, go for it again. Uh, I think the motivation will come more when uh, it starts to get warmer and I can actually uh, see me wearing it uh, at those times. So um, yeah. That's one of the whips that uh, I feel like will be uh, in a whip pile for a while, but uh, will definitely be picked up again. Uh, so that's it for uh, the orange trousers. Also a really fun project uh, to work on. I never did the filet stitch that uh, it consists of, so that was really fun uh, to learn as well. Um, also, if you like uh, knitting pants, uh, Le Poul has like a lot of, not a lot, has like a few uh a few pants patterns that uh, are really cool um so i would definitely uh would like to make some of the other pants as well then uh the last whip that i want to show you is uh the pebble top that i started a while ago um the pebble top is by lenit uh, which is the same as the porcelain sweater um 
and I made her with the Knitting for Olive uh, Merino uh, in pomegranate. Uh, I did come a long way with her. Um, I feel like she has the right length, but I did not want to cast off until I was sure because the length also depends on how long the straps would be. And uh, I have not finished the straps. Part of this is um, because the straps are the straps and like the the ends, like the borders of the pattern are with crochet, and I'm not a crocheter, so I at first I didn't even really understand how to crochet it at all. So uh, I left it in the whip out for a while, and then on like a stream of uh, typical bliss. She did do the borders with uh, on the stream, so I kind of knew how to do it. But um, then I tried it and it just didn't look right and I'm not sure why. So I feel like I need to do another kind of border uh, for it to look nice or just unravel it. Because I feel like maybe unraveling it will be better and just use the yarn for uh, like another camisole. Because I feel like uh, the yarn was a bit expensive, it is knitting for olive yarn, uh, and I feel like and I feel like uh, it would be nicer to just use it for like another camisole that I would rather wear than the pebble top, because I feel like the pebble top was very nice in theory, but I tried it on like a little bit with um, like safety pins on the the little straps, and I felt like it just didn't look that nice, so. Um, uh, I don't know what will happen with it yet. Um, probably unraveling. I feel I feel more towards unraveling than uh, finishing this, but um, we'll have to see. Uh, I don't have to decide yet. I think like the end of spring I will start knitting camisoles again, and then probably will uh, decide what to do with this one. That's actually it for the works in progress. Like the most of them are nearly finished, so. So that's very nice. I feel like I will mostly focus on the socks, uh, on the Kutar socks uh, that I started uh, for the next period. But um, I also want uh, to cast on something else, um, which brings me actually to the next category, which is acquisitions. Because I have had my eye on the Levitate wrap from my favorite things knitwear for a while. Uh, and I really wanted to make it and uh, I saw someone on Instagram make it in brown um, and I really like I really liked that make I will try to find it and put it somewhere here so you can see uh, which one I mean and also give credits to her but I did buy the yarn for it it came in a pack like this uh, it is the Isager like the Isager uh, Eco Soft uh, and also the Isager 301 uh, and it is uh, I will try to take it out. So this is the Trio Softs. Which is like a really nice rich brown uh, color, uh, which I really love. Uh, and it also gives like a very luxurious feel and look, which I already can see in action. Uh, then the Eco Soft, it is so soft. So that's definitely a very great name for it because I could just sleep on this. Um, it is like brown with like a little bit of white in it. Uh, so it gives like a little bit of this uh, marbled effect on the cardigan. Uh, but I really, I cannot wait to use this. This also is like such a nice brown. And I feel like the left edge wrap would be just so soft and so nice and luxurious uh, to wear. Uh, but this one I will also start soon because um, I have been monogamously knitting on the porcelain sweater for like the last uh, two months, I think. And then I started the sock to like totally do something different. And now I think I'm ready for the next big project. So yeah, cannot wait. I think it is knitted on six millimeter needles. So I feel like uh, it will go by very fast. Um, it is also mostly in stockinette except for the double knitted border. Uh, so uh, not much to think about, uh, which is nice after like a color work sweater and also a lace sock. Um, I needed some just stockinette project. Um, 
so yeah i'm very happy with it uh, i did order it from the website itself so from the isager website uh, and it came here um, i feel like within a week so that's very fast so if you're in the netherlands and you want to uh, order from isager from a website and don't really know uh, if it's worth it or if you have to wait like uh, too long for it um, it's totally worth it and uh, it will come to you very fast so um so yeah uh, very excited about that one uh, i also i really want to try new kinds of uh, yarn all the time so uh, i have never used these yarns so i'm very excited to use them um, i do feel like the eco soft uh, resembles a little bit of the drops air um, and i really liked working with that one so i'm really excited to see uh, how that works up okay and then um the second thing that i bought uh, is actually a set of needles i bought the cnet kushitsus small a while ago and i really like them i use them uh, mostly for knitting camisoles uh, and also for the acneed cardigan uh, and i really love them they're just so smooth uh, to knit with and also very nice to look at so i decided to also buy the medium set uh, which is this one which is this one and now I have two and I'm really happy with that because I really love them and uh, to just compare them for example my liquor needles when I use them eventually like the smoothness fades uh, over time because you use it a lot and I feel like the like the wax or something that is on it to make it smooth just disappears because you're rubbing them together uh, a lot uh, and with these ones i feel like that's not happening and they just stay smooth uh, forever uh, so that's really nice and um, i'm really happy with them uh, i already used uh, used them for the porcelain sweater and it was very nice to work with so i'm really happy that i did buy them and uh, it was a re really nice addition to my needle sets uh, did i really need them no uh, am i really happy that i bought them still yes i am so uh, i will be making a lot of uh, new projects with them which i can't wait for uh, then uh, also two other things that i bought is uh, two new row counters for some reason uh, my row counters i always lose my row counters or they just uh, die at some random moment so i did buy uh, two of these uh, i also have like another one in like a salmon color but i don't know where that one is uh, hence my previous point uh, i feel like it is somewhere uh, like under under a couch or something I feel like it is still in my house uh, because I have not taken my knitting uh, outside for a while. I have only knitted inside the house so it cannot be lost uh, outside. It is very necessary I feel like to have row counters as uh, at least for me because I don't really like a uh, row counting on my phone. So I'm very happy with, with them. Um, I also would like, like um, a manual row counter where you can just click. Uh, and it's not on battery so it will never die uh, but i want a really cute one so i'm still on the hunt for that uh, then uh, lastly uh, what i bought are some new stitch markers because also with stitch markers i feel like i just lose them uh, very fast and uh, also um, i wanted more of them i feel like i had like 10 total and i had to uh, sometimes take stitch markers from other projects to use in a current project because I just didn't have enough so I did buy um, these stitch markers uh, they are very colorful stitch markers uh, like this and uh, there's a lot of them so I will never be out of stitch markers I feel like uh, for the coming times um, so I'm very happy with that, uh, that I actually don't have the problem of stitch markers anymore um, and I really recommend them because also they are very thin uh, and they won't leave gaps in your work, uh, especially socks which has been a problem for me in the past. So yeah, 
uh, that is actually all about my knitting that I wanted to share with you. Um, I will talk a little bit more about my past uh, six months and what has happened and why I was away. Uh, so if you're only here for the knitting, thank you for watching. Uh, and if you want to know more, I will uh, start here with that uh, section. Um, well, the most important thing why I went away is that I actually got a job. Uh, I had been looking for a job for a long time, I feel like eight, nine months. And I just uh, didn't have any luck. And then uh, at one moment I actually had two offers at the same time from two different companies and uh, I actually had to choose between them. So that was actually crazy. But uh, I did choose uh, one of them and that's where I'm working currently. I'm working as a uh, marketer. I don't know if that's how you also say it in English, but that's how we say it in Dutch. So I do the marketing in a marketing team um, at my new company. Uh, it is full time, so that's why I had to focus a lot on my work and was really tired, especially in like the first month uh, in like the weekends. So I didn't really feel like uh, filming a lot and uh, putting a lot of time into editing and and also thinking of video ideas um, and showing all the knitting like essentially doing work when I am in my free time so I needed to take a little bit more time to just focus on my job and uh, settling in and actually uh, making it part of my routine before I wanted to pick this up again and before you know it it was six months so that's like the most important reason why uh, I was away for a while I did continue knitting but also not as much as I did uh, before um, so I feel like I, I did not finish a lot of pieces uh, at least not as much as I would have if I spent like the same amount uh, of time on knitting as I did before uh, so I feel, felt like I did not have a lot to show you. Um, but I feel like I am more in the rhythm now. I had like a lot of free days because uh, of Christmas and New Year's. And I felt like I could relax uh, and actually take time to uh, shoot this video. Uh, which I want to do more in the new year as well. Because I really like doing so. So that's a little explanation about that. Then also I, I think I mentioned this in a previous podcast as well. I really wanted to uh, focus a lot on running and I wanted to run a 10k. Which I had like a race scheduled in I feel like October or November or something. And um, I was training for that. Uh, but the thing is I got injured. Like two, I got injured two times. First time it was my knee on my left leg. And then I went to the physiotherapist. Uh, and we got it fixed. And then for some reason my calf on my right leg just started acting up. And it has been an injury since. I feel like it happens like when you go outside and you go for a run. Then it's fine. Then the second time it acts up again. You take a little bit of rest for like two weeks or something. It feels fine. Then you go out again. And then after like a few runs it gets back. So I'm, I was really struggling with that. And I had to cancel my 10k race. But uh, New Year I have uh, set up an appointment with a physiotherapist. Because... I have a lot of races that are already planned this year, which also consists of a marathon at the end of the year. Um, it will be the Amsterdam Marathon. Uh, so we'll see if I make it to that. No, I'm not even gonna say we'll see. I just, I just, I'm gonna do it. Uh, I also wanna do the half, uh, the half marathon, um, which will be in May. Uh, and also a 10k race before that, which will be like 3-4 uh, weeks before that. Um, and also uh, we have uh, something that's called the Dom to Dom Loop, uh, which is like 16 kilometers, uh, which I also uh, want to sign up for, um, which is a really nice uh, race here. Uh, so I'm really excited to go uh, train for that. Um, I'm just hoping that my physiotherapist will help me uh, and I will be back on the roads uh, as soon as possible because I do need to train if I want to do those races. But yeah, it is a really nice hobby and I feel like 
it really clears my head and it is almost free i mean i did buy a, like a lot of running gear for it so it's not totally free but uh, going outside and just running is free so uh, it's not that expensive and you're outside uh, getting your steps in uh, which is really nice uh, so i really want to work on that this year uh, and get that marathon uh, done at the end of the year um, that would be a really big goal of mine uh, another hobby that i started because i'm not just a knitting girl apparently uh, is i want to draw more and uh, I did find a book uh, that has like all the drawing techniques, especially for like pen or pencil uh, in it. And I want to work uh, out of that one and just uh, work on my uh, drawing techniques a little bit more. Um, I'll show you. This is the book that I uh, ended up buying. It isn't the title is in Dutch, but it says uh, the complete drawing book. Which means that there's everything you need to know about drawing in this book. Um, which is nice. I already went through it uh, a little bit just to read what's in it. And which parts uh, really piques my interest. And uh, I feel like a lot of it uh, will be drawing people. Um, I feel like that's just such an interesting topic to draw. Especially to really capture someone's essence. It's really something that I really... Uh, I'm intrigued by so yeah that's something that I also want to work on this year so um, very nice uh, to have like a, a couple hobbies that I can rotate between so uh, when I'm not feeling knitting which is almost never but when I'm not feeling it I can just uh, do another hobby then also I of course have my sewing machine so I, I want to make a jumpsuit this year um, that actually fits well because I feel like a lot of times when I buy a jumpsuit uh, from the mall or online uh, it just fits a little bit awkwardly uh, especially when you sit down or like uh, bend over or something uh, so I want to make a good fitting jumpsuit this year so that's my goal for my sewing and uh, I feel like that should be attainable so yeah, that's, uh, that's it for all the hobbies. Um, I do want to jump off the uh, art part from the drawing. I got a museum card, which is actually a card where you can go to a lot of museums for free. Uh, you do have to pay uh, for the cards, uh, which is like, I don't know, 60 euros or something. And then you can go uh, for a year for free to a lot of museums and uh, i've been to some museums and i just got really inspired to uh, make some art myself uh, especially drawing uh, and um, i maybe also want to do painting at some point but uh, i'm more going towards drawing at this point um, so we'll see about that um, some other thing that uh, I did see at some museums that I also really want to do is uh, pottery. Uh, I really want to make my own mug and also I want to make like uh, a matching set of like a teapot, a mug, uh, like uh, a plate or something. That's made for when I'm better at doing pottery and if I even like it because I've never done it before. So uh, maybe I will do a course this year but that's not uh something that but that's not something that uh, needs to happen this year because i do have a lot of plans um so yeah i feel like that that's like a good list of uh hobbies to try this year i will never be bored so yeah and um also some other thing that i want to accomplish this year is i want to get my driver's license um, I did go for my driver's license before, but I did not pass uh, my final driver's license test. Uh, and then I wanted to save up again to uh, go back, but uh, I didn't have a job for a while, so I didn't, I couldn't really save. Now I, now that I do have a job, I can save again, and uh, I want to start uh, very soon. Uh, I did book in my test for the uh, theory part of it, uh, which will be end of January. So uh, that will be the uh, first step. And after that, I think I'm going to find a new driving school uh, because I did not really like my last one. So uh, that's also uh, something that I'm planning to do. 
and I also want to make some more trips this year. Uh, I really liked going to Barcelona and I went to Valencia uh, last year in uh, October, I think, and I really liked it. Uh, I think I liked Valencia more than Barcelona uh, because it's, I feel, felt like it was a little bit more authentically Spain. And I felt like Barcelona was just Amsterdam, but in Spanish. Um, so I feel, I feel like uh, if I want to live in Spain, which I want to do at some point, I would go more for a city like Valencia uh, than Barcelona. But I do want to visit more Spanish cities. So uh, I do want to go to uh, Sevilla in the upcoming year and maybe also to Madrid. But I'm not sure. I uh, know that I want to go to Sevilla for sure and maybe Madrid as well. Uh, but we'll have to see uh, as well if I can find the time and also maybe if I find something else that I really want to go to. Um, but I really want to see more of Spain and also the world of course. So um, that's also definitely on my list for this year. I feel like 2024 will be a good year, uh, a lot of things to accomplish and I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, yeah, I think that's actually it also for like the personal update. I feel like the last six months just went by so fast, but I'm happy that uh, I could be back here and actually talk to you guys. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you soon. So thank you for watching, if you're still here, of course. Um, I will see you soon and uh, have a nice day. And of course, Happy New Year.